God bless you, everyone. My name is David Ewan, and I head up the Bravehearted Ministry at the Resurrection Center with Pastors Jose and Melly Martinez. Welcome, and it's good to see all of you. Today, my topic is fight the good fight. So my primary focus today is to talk about 2 Timothy chapter 4, but I'm going to take a look at it from a telescopic view, look at, at it from a distance, and then zoom in, and we're going to look at it differently that way. To talk about the book in the Bible, I must talk about the portion of the Bible that it is in. That is called the pastoral epistles. Epistles mean letters. It's not email or WhatsApp. I will describe the three books that are in the pastoral epistles. One of the other books that are in the pastoral epistles is First of Timothy, to go along with Second of Timothy. I will provide a snippet summary of both of those books and then talk about the difference between those books. The third book in the pastoral epistles is the book of Titus, which I will give a brief summary of this to cover all of the pastoral epistles. This will not take time. After all this is done, then I can focus on 2 Timothy chapter 4. I will conclude my conversation with you today of my thoughts of the Apostle Paul who is the author of these epistles. So here's the telescope. So we'll first look at uh, Second of Timothy from afar, from uh, the theology to divinity to epistles, then Timothy, then finally to Second of Timothy to chapter four. So I'm gonna focus on the theology of things, then the divinity of things, then we'll talk about the epistles, then I'll zoom into Timothy, and then I'll talk about 2 of Timothy chapter 4. My agenda today will be first talking about the difference between theology and divinity and why it relates to our conversation today. We'll talk about number two, Bible study, which is about people's places, messages, and the things we learn about the principles in the Bible. Number three, we'll talk about uh, Apostle Paul's epistles. Again, that's first and second of Timothy and also Titus, three books. We'll have a short snippet of Titus to cover all the epistles. We'll uh, discuss the difference between first and second of Timothy. Next, we'll talk about uh, second of Timothy in chapter four. That's my focus today. We'll talk about the importance of sound doctrine, which relates to uh, the book of Timothy, both uh, first and second of Timothy. And then I'll wrap up talking about a reflection of who Apostle Paul was. So recently, in my earlier broadcast, we've been talking about theology and divinity. Theology is the academic understanding of the Bible and its associated history. Divinity is the spiritual and ceremonial understanding of the Bible and the Holy Spirit. We used the study of first fruits to learn about the difference between theology and divinity. We had talked about Next, we will do something more similar to what was done in a series we had done at the Resurrection Center called Bible 101. So what is sort of a Bible study? Um, that's the talking about the people in the Bible, the geography, the messages given, um, and, and the lessons learned from those messages. Um, we have at the Resurrection Center, the kradio.com, that's how it's spelled, the kradio.com, so that stands for Kingdom Radio. And when you go to that website, you'll select Basic Bible 101. And you'll get six hours of Bible summary of both the Old and New Testaments. It's also found on Resurrection Center Radio. With Bible study messages, you learn about the messages, the teaching, the people, the places. And that's the foundation of theology needed to understand the divinity that the churches practice. Okay, let's now talk about the pastoral epistles. Today we use pastoral epistles to understand how divinity was taught and recorded in theology, because theology is understood from what was written in the Bible. We continue to understand, have an understanding of theology and divinity. The pastoral epistles are a group of three books that I told you about, uh, and they're in the New Testament. There's the first uh, epistle to Timothy, the second epistle to Timothy, and the epistle to Titus. 
They are presented as letters from the Apostle Paul, um, and it's from, uh, to Timothy from the Apostle Paul, and also to Titus, okay? The purpose of the letters was to instruct, to give advice, to correct, uh, to clear up any misunderstandings, provide warnings, and to offer direction. We can learn from them today. Now let's talk more about the pastoral epistles. Here's a bird's eye view of today's lesson. The pastoral epistles are a group of three books that we talked about. They're presented as letters from the Apostle Paul and the, to uh, the Apostle uh, from, to Timothy and to Titus. And they're called epistles due to their focus on matters of church leadership and church life. Here's a small snippet of First of Timothy. First of Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul to Timothy, who was in Ephesus. That's where he was. He was at Ephesus at the time. It was the longest of the pastoral epistles featuring six chapters. It talked about praying for governing leaders, qualifications for elders and deacons, warnings about those who would leave the faith. We talked about apostasy and heresy. Uh, number five, it talked about instructions of various groups within the church, including widows. And number six, instructions about false teachers. That was first of Timothy. Second of Timothy is something else. Second of Timothy shares the Apostle Paul's deep personal friendship with Timothy because this is near his uh, dying days. It's as well as his views regarding his end of life, sort of that reflection. Number two, he wrote about not being ashamed of Christ, and that's in Second of Timothy chapter one. Number three, he discussed being a good soldier of Christ who is approved by God. That's in Second of Timothy chapter two. He warned of godliness in the last days, godlessness, I should say, uh, in the last days. Uh, and then he talked about the importance of scripture. That's in Second of Timothy chapter three. And number six, he challenged Timothy to preach God's truth. And that's in Second of Timothy chapter four. Now, here's a small snippet of Titus. I just want to cover all of the pastoral epistles. Titus was an associate of the Apostle Paul who served as a leader in the church of Crete. That's an island. They there, talked about the qualification for elders and uh, talking about teaching sound doctrine and living out faith in Christ and serving others. The letters to Timothy and Titus combine the historic gospel of Christ to the practical mission of the church in Ephesus and Crete. Ephesus is located near the western shores of modern-day Turkey, about 80 kilometers south of Izmir, Turkey. That's about 50 miles. Uh, Timothy was in Ephesus. That's where Timothy was. Crete is a Greek island in the Mediterranean Sea. It's really in the middle, in the Mediterranean Sea. It's south of Greece and north of that border between Libya and Egypt. Titus was in Crete. So uh, here's the story of Titus. So let's just get that out of the way. Titus' task was ad more administrative. Mostly he was to maintain sound doctrine and straighten out what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town. Um, after Paul's release from house arrest in Rome in 62 AD, Titus traveled with Paul to Crete where Paul left him in charge of the new church. Okay, now let's talk about Timothy. And that's what our major focus was. The difference between these two chapters, and I'm talking about first of uh, Timothy and second of Timothy, so I should say the difference between these two books, is that the first section mainly focuses out on explaining the rules of Christianity, while the second chapter focuses on the ways to follow the religion. In first of Timothy, it talked about character and integrity. Character is the behavior and actions Integrity is trustworthiness in your words. Second of Timothy is the combination of character and integrity. So let's talk about character and trustworthiness. It is behavior that proves trustworthiness. It's also the words that prove integrity. It's a lifestyle with choice behavior and choice words. Now let's talk about second of Timothy chapter four. That's the big focus today. The Apostle Paul tells Timothy to preach the good word of God and to be prepared to do so in every season, good or bad. Timothy is instructed to rebuke, correct, and encourage those he taught with careful instruction and great patience. Sounds like what our pastor sounds like. Paul warned Timothy that there would be a time 
when the people would not listen to sound doctrine. Sounds like churches in America, does it? doesn't it? Uh, now let's talk about people with itching ears. In place of sound doctrine, the Apostle Paul said people would turn to their own desires and they would listen to teachers that they say they want to hear. The people are going to turn away and not listen to the truth. They will turn away from God's truth and towards myths. It's called heresy. The Apostle Paul reminded Timothy to keep his head during these kinds of situations, withstand hardship, and continue his work as an evangelist and fully discharge his duties in his ministry. Now, let's talk about the Apostle Paul's final days, his impending departure. The Apostle Paul said his departure was near and that he had fought the important good fight. He went on to say he had finished the race and had kept the faith. He believed there was a righteous crown awaiting him and to those who have kept the faith. Now, here are some personal remarks. In Philemon, Demas is mentioned as a fellow worker. In Colossians, he is mentioned along uh, with Luke. In 2 of Timothy, chapter 4, the Apostle Paul asked Timothy to come to him quickly because Demas had deserted him and gone to Thessalonia. Thessalonica, I should say, which is the coast of the far northeast of Greece. In 168 BC, it became the capital of the second, the second district of Macedonia. This was related to betrayal. The Apostle Paul was betrayed. He said that the Cretans went to Galatia, more of a service of church, and also that Titus went to Dalmatia. Titus had traveled for service for the church. Now, Paul said that only Luke remained with him. So he wanted Timothy to bring Mark too. The Apostle Paul had directed Tychicus to go to Ephesus for the purpose of building up and encouraging the church there. The Apostle Paul told Timothy to bring his cloak and his scrolls, particularly the parchments. He warned Timothy about the metal worker, the copper worker. This is Alexander who had done harm. This is betrayal and heresy. The Apostle Paul says that God will repay Alexander for what he did. He told Timothy to be on guard around him because the man strongly opposed the message. Now, let's break down the harm that was done to the Apostle Paul. There is evidence that Demas was with Paul during Paul's second imprisonment in Rome, at least for a while. Then something happened. Demas went against the Apostle Paul, abandoned the ministry, and left town. The Apostle Paul wrote about the sad situation, and the way he wrote it is Demas, because he loved this world, had deserted me and had gone to Thessalonica. See, the separation caused by Demas, Demas' desertion of Paul, leaving of Paul, was not merely spatial, but it was also spiritual. Demas left Rome because he fell in love with the world. In other words, Demas chose the corrupt value system of the unsaved world over what heaven values. Demas loves the things of this life, and that's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. The Apostle Paul refers to the name Cretans. He was a believer who served Paul at some point during Paul's second Roman imprisonment and had later gone to Galatia. Galatia is a region in Turkey near its capital, Ankara. It's not Istanbul. Istanbul is where the action is. Ankara is sort of central Turkey, north of the island of Cyprus. Unlike Demas, the reason he left is not mentioned. This leaves open the possibility that he left on better terms than Demas did. Titus's task was administrative. We talked about that before. Mostly he was to maintain sound doctrine and straighten out what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town. And that's in Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Titus had left for Dalmatia. Dalmatia was part of Croatia, that is across from northern Italy, from the Adriatic Sea. The reason for his trip to Dalmatia is unknown, though likely for evangelistic purposes. Not all of the people who left the Apostle Paul abandoned him. Alexander was a teacher in Ephesus. That's the metal worker. Ephesus is located near the western shores of modern-day Turkey. He had the belief that was contrary to Christian doctrine. That is heresy. The Apostle Paul says Alexander the coppersmith or metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. 
you too be on guard against him, for he has strongly resisted our preaching. From this, it would appear that Alexander had gotten Paul into some serious trouble that left Paul without allies. <clears throat> now, here's uh, the Apostle Paul's final words. The Apostle Paul asked Timothy to do his best to arrive before winter. He told Timothy that uh, Eubulus greets him, as well as Claudia, Linus, and uh, Pudens, and every one of the sisters and brothers. He ends by saying, our Lord will be with Timothy and those who are with him. So here's more detail in a better review of 2nd of Timothy chapter 4. In, in chapter 4, the final chapter of 2nd of Timothy, it includes two, two major sections. The first section develops the importance of preaching the word of God, and that's in 2nd of Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. The second section uh, offers uh, concluding thoughts to Timothy. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 through 22, a little bit longer, but this is because it, uh, the Apostle Paul was in his final days. So in the beginning part, verses 1 through 5 include the Apostle Paul giving a charge to Timothy. Uh, that's uh, Paul's reason for using the strong commanding language in his own impending death. As later verses will show, the Apostle Paul knows that he will not survive his current run-in with the Roman law. After all of the encouragement and coaching he has offered in this letter, the Apostle Paul wants to leave a clear impression on his friend, that's Timothy, to continue the work that they have done so far. So Timothy is to preach the word, that's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. In the future, people would not endure sound teaching, but select teachers who speak what they want to hear. That means to provide a nice sound to itching ears. And that's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Turning from the truth to myths, that's 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. Timothy, in contrast, is commanding to fulfill his calling. That's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. Rather than being distracted by bickering and errors, Timothy is to hold on to the truth. As the prior chapter indicated, the anchor point, the anchor point of all this truth is the written word of God. And we see that later in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. In verses 6 through 18, the Apostle Paul speaks about his perspective on the end of life, his future with Christ, and his friends in this world. Okay, so many had left the Apostle Paul with only Luke remaining. And that's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Some of these friends had left on good terms in order to continue Christian work. Others, like Demos, had abandoned the faith completely in order to return to this present world. Even those who had stayed with Paul were not able to vouch for him during his trial because of the hostile Roman government. So he lost support in that way as well. And that's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Despite this, the Apostle Paul felt the help and presence of the Lord. And that's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 through 18. The Apostle Paul asked for Mark and Timothy to visit him. That's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, bringing his coat, books, and parchments. The Apostle Paul warned against Alexander, the coppersmith. That's in 2 of Timothy chapter 4, verse 14 through 15. While we're not exactly sure of who this Alexander is, he was clearly enough of a threat that the Apostle Paul felt the need to name the names. The Apostle Paul's brief conclusion includes greetings to friends, information about Aristus and Trophimus, and another plea for Timothy to come to him in Rome before the winter. Others in Rome send their greetings, and a concluding word is given, the final words left in the New Testament before Paul's death, the Lord be with your spirit, grace be with you. And that's in 2 of Timothy, Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 22. This spots lights on grace. It's a fitting conclusion to both Apostle Paul's writings and his earthly life. Now I'm going to turn to our attention about what Apostle Paul was trying to talk about. Uh, it's the importance of sound doctrine. And we've talked a lot about this in uh, the Resurrection Center, so I'm going to spend a moment to talk about it now. It's a major focus of Apostle Paul's message to Timothy in Ephesus. So there, there are, uh, I believe it's six items. Number one, faith from the message. Number two, the gospel is a sacred trust. Number three, behavior comes from belief. Number four, know the truth from falsehood. Number five, eternal truth and life. 
And number six, encouraging others. So let me talk about number one. Sound doctrine is important because our faith is based on a specific message. Change that message and the basis of faith shifts from Christ to something else. Our eternal destiny depends on hearing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And that's in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Let's go to number two. Sound doctrine is important because the gospel is a sacred trust, and we dare not tamper with God's communication to the world. Our duty is to deliver the message, not to change it. Rather than alter the apostles' doctrine, we receive what has been passed down to us and keep it as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. And that's in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. Number three, sound doctrine is important because we believe affects, it affects what we do. Behavior is an extension of theology, and there is a direct correlation between what we think and how we act. For example, two people stand on top of a bridge. One believes he can fly, and the other believes he cannot fly. Their next actions will be quite different. In, in the same way, a man who believes that there is no such thing as right and wrong will naturally behave differently from a man who believes in a well-defined moral set of standards. Let's go to number four. Sound doctrine is important because we must assert truth in a world of falsehood, that the best way to distinguish truth from falsehood is to know what truth is. Read your Bible, because that's where the truth is. Number five, sound doctrine is important because the end of sound doctrine is life. Watch your life and doctrine closely, persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And that's in 1st of Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. And in number six, sound doctrine is important because it encourages believers. A love of God's word brings great peace. And those who proclaim peace and who proclaim salvation are truly beautiful. And that's in Isaiah 52, 7. A pastor must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that it can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. And that's in Titus chapter 1, verse 9. So a summary of what we've talked about. Here's a review of the value of sound doctrine. We talked about number one, faith uh, from the message. Number two, the gospel is a sacred trust. Number three, behavior comes from belief. Number four, no truth from falsehood. Number five, eternal truth and life. And number six, encourage others. Now, here are some thoughts about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is often considered to be the most important person after Jesus in the history of Christianity because of what was recorded. His epistles have had enormous influence on Christian theology, especially on the relationship between God the Father, the Son, Jesus, and on the human relationship with the divine or spiritual realm. And that's the Holy Spirit. He preached the death and resurrection and lordship of Jesus Christ, and he proclaimed that faith in Jesus guarantees eternity. His main theme was, and it's in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And that's in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Apostle Paul has had the responsibility to teach the message of faith, repentance, and baptism to bear witness to the divine mission of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It was to outline man's relationship to Jesus and to God, our Father. Also to strengthen testimonies, to define doctrine, and to reinforce the teachings of the Christian church. He also instructed the people in their everyday living and gave warning to the world. The Apostle Paul impressively taught the importance of matching our lives after Jesus Christ, always moving forward, the direction of perfection. The writings of the Apostle Paul can give us answers, direction, and strength. People today can admire the Apostle Paul's courage, honesty, strength of faith, and deep testimony. This is true character that comes with integrity. The Apostle Paul's ministry was similar to Jesus's ministry in that it was leading by example. The title of today's message was Fight the Good Fight. 
here's what we have learned today. Number one, we started with the difference between theology and div divinity. Number two, we kind of talked about what Bible study is. It's the people, the places, the messages, the learnings, the principles and the values we get from the Bible. Number three, it's the Apostle Paul's epistles. That's first and second of Timothy and Titus. Number four, we did a short snippet, snippet of Titus to cover all the epistles. Number five, we talked about the difference between first and second of Timothy. Number six, we put a good focus on second of Timothy, which is chapter four. Number seven, we talked about the importance of sound doctrine. And number eight, we had a reflection of who the Apostle Paul was. I thank you for joining me. My name is David Ewan, and this is the Resurrection Center.